The movie opens up with a former model, Gabby, who accompanies a movie director named Dan to his abandoned riverside house in a rural city of England. Due to his busy schedule, Dan has to return back to London, leaving Gabby behind with the assurance that he will return in a few days. Before departing though, he hands her some movie scripts and asks her to read them through, suggesting she could be a unique case of a model turning into an actor. Despite her initial reluctance to stay alone, Dan somehow manages to persuade her. After he leaves, Gabby begins to unpack her belongings and arrange them all in order. During this, she hears a door creak, startling her for a moment. However, she dismisses the sound and proceeds to read the scripts. A short while later, Gabby hears a knock on the door, so she goes to answer it. It's a delivery boy named JC, who recognizes her as a supermodel and expresses his admiration. Unfortunately, Gabby doesn't show much interest in the conversation and quickly shuts the door. Later, she looks at her aging face in the mirror, which makes her feel sad. It appears that she uses several skincare products to retain glow in her face. That night, Gabby has a dream in which she imagines someone entering her bedroom and spying on her. A couple of days later, Dan returns and inquires about Gabby's thoughts on the scripts. She admits her difficulty in understanding them and instead expresses her desire to do a modeling show with the renowned designer named Max Balligan. Dan, however, discourages her from returning to modeling as she has already retired for it and she can't work with a guy whose name rhymes with his. During their conversation, he also asks about Gabby's experience in the house and she says that she doesn't feel alone like she thought she would. She goes on to say that she feels a strange vibe and also a sense of being watched as if the house has a life of its own. Dan is amused when she talks about spirits and dismisses the topic. After this, he heads off to London. Gabby walks back to the living room where she stumbles upon a note saying that spirits don't use Joe Lang aftershave. Believing that Dan wrote it, she hurries outside to stop him and inquire why he left such a message. In response, Dan assumes she's joking and dismisses her concerns. He says that he didn't write the note. Gabby cannot believe that the spirits have such good taste in aftershave. Following this, Gabby goes back into the house, but her fear intensifies upon discovering another note that reads, I am not your enemy. In a panicked state, she rushes out of the house and attempts to contact Dan, but her calls go unanswered. Left with no alternative, she summons JC and asks him to inspect the house. JC shows up and is disappointed to find that it wasn't a euphemism. He conducts a thorough search of the entire premises, but finds nothing amiss. Shortly after, Dan also arrives, but he thinks she's playing some kind of game. This infuriates Gabby, prompting her to accuse Dan of confining her in the house and having a secret accomplice make her go insane in order to get rid of her. Afterwards, Dan calls his girlfriend, Nina, and tells her that he will be staying home for a night. Later, in the evening, he takes Gabby to dinner to help her divert her mind, but ends up getting drunk. When they return home, they play some chasing game around the house and end up getting intimate with each other. After making out, Gabby tells him that she is aware of his relationship with Nina Lamont, the reason why he drives back to London every night. In response, Dan admits it, but he claims that Nina isn't a good lover like Gabby. As their conversation unfolds, Gabby shares about her first love, Jimmy, whom she met when she was 15. According to her, Jimmy had a skin condition and wasn't that appealing. Despite this, she made love with him one night, and they spent the entire night on the beach. The following morning, he dropped her home on his moped, but on the way back, he met with a brutal accident that claimed his life. That dude died happy. Regardless of his death, Gabby says that she still feels his spirit watching over her. Around midnight, Gabby wakes up to find Dan has already left. Alone in her bed, she hears the door creak and witnesses a chair moving on its own. Moments later, a man with a female wig and painted nails suddenly appears in front of her, causing her to scream in terror. In the morning, Gabby awakens to find Dan putting on his clothes. This leaves her to wonder whether the vision she experienced earlier was a dream. Dan asks her to get ready if she wants to return back to London, but Gabby decides to stay. After he leaves, Gabby makes her way down to the basement, where she discovers an ancient typewriter and a wardrobe. Sensing a presence of someone in the house, she attempts to communicate with it using handwritten notes, posing questions like, can you see me? Are you dead? Can I get the name of your wig maker? And 
Do I know you? In the next scene, we see Gabby putting on her makeup and wearing a beautiful dress. While looking at herself in the mirror, she also talks to an unseen individual, addressing it as Jimmy and speaking without fear. In the midst of the chit-chat, Gabby expresses that she has fulfilled her aspirations since Jimmy's passing. Now that her glory days have passed and none of the script seems suitable, she believes it's time to explore something new, perhaps burning things. Later that night, Gabby watches an interview with Max Bell again on TV and learns about his upcoming private event where he plans to select a few lucky people for his show. Excited, she shares this news with the invisible presence of Jimmy, expressing her intention to attend the event. At midnight, Gabby is in her sleep when she is woken up by the drunk JC and his companion Mickey. JC suggests that they leave, claiming that this isn't the right thing to do, but his friend insists that Gabby is the key to helping him fulfill his dream of becoming a fashion designer. A few moments later, Gabby opens the door and invites the two friends inside. She seductively sits on the couch and asks JC to turn on some music. Mickey interprets this as a hint for intimacy and begins to kiss her and touch her body. However, she quickly pushes him away, saying, not so fast. Jimmy's gonna go get the condoms. Mickey then tells her about JC's dream and asks Gabby to assist him in connecting with the right people. However, Gabby cautions JC to reconsider his career path, explaining that this profession can take people to the top, but it can also abandon them in the middle of nowhere. Following this conversation, Mickey asks JC to leave so that he can have some private time with Gabby. In a Instantly, JC departs, and Mickey proceeds to force himself towards her. Gabby attempts to resist, but Mickey resorts to violence, slapping her forcefully and commanding her compliance. Feeling helpless, she breaks down in tears and calls out Jimmy's name. As soon as she says so, an invisible entity intervenes, pulling Mickey away from Gabby and throwing him to the floor. Confused, Mickey throws some random punches at the air, but the invisible force subdues him and pins him to a table as a form of retribution. After a brutal assault, Mickey is eventually allowed to escape. Yeah, tell Goofy and Donald what you saw. The next morning, Gabby returns to the house after a walk by the river. She starts getting ready for Max Balagan's event and asks the invisible Jimmy to accompany her as well. Amidst this, she lights a cigarette and soon after, the unseen presence blows the smoke back into her face. After witnessing this, Gabby attempts to reach out and touch the invisible Jimmy, but she fails. She then questions Jimmy about why he doesn't want her to touch him, but receives no response. Changing the subject, Gabby decides to serve Jimmy a freshly brewed coffee. She leaves the coffee to brew and turns to retrieve two cups. As she turns back, the invisible entity unexpectedly splashes hot coffee onto her, causing a severe burn on half of her face. As a result, Gabby collapses to the floor in agony, clutching her face and crying out in pain. In the next scene, we see Gabby, who has bandaged her face, is peacefully asleep in her bedroom. A few moments later, her phone begins to ring, stirring her awake. The caller is Dan, but Gabby chooses to ignore it. Alongside the phone's ring, she also hears the distinct sound of typing coming from the basement. Intrigued, she follows the sound, but as soon as she reaches the basement, the typing noise abruptly stops. This time, she proceeds towards an old wardrobe and opens it. Inside, she finds a collection of dusty coats and the same blonde wig that the mysterious man and war in her earlier dream. In addition, she comes across a yellow box filled with numerous pictures of the man from her dream. These discoveries send shivers down her spine, causing her to drop everything to the floor. Just then, she notices a man in the mirror and screams. Gabby anxiously attempts to escape, but the invisible figure seizes her and pins her onto a table. He then proceeds to force himself against her will. Later, Dan becomes concerned when Gabby doesn't answer any of his calls, so he decides decides to check on her. Upon arriving, he is shocked to see her brutally battered state and inquires about how it happened. Gabby, in a crying voice, points towards the pictures and informs him that the man had been in the house the entire time. Dan heads to the basement to investigate but finds no trace of the man. Returning to Gabby, he reveals that the man in the pictures is Michael Gygas, a once famous actor from 15 years ago who often portrayed feminine roles. Dan explains that Michael's career took a nosedive at one point, which forced him to sell all of his properties in order to settle his debts. Since then, the man disappeared, 
without a trace. After a brief conversation, Dan checks on Gabby's burned face and urges her to seek medical attention. At that very moment, the invisible Michael unexpectedly strikes Dan on the head from behind, knocking him out. Michael then covers Gabby's face with his hand, rendering her unconscious. After some time, Gabby gradually regains consciousness and sees Michael visibly seated on a chair nearby. He firstly apologizes to her for breaking her trust by impersonating Jimmy. He then explains that he has been invisible for so many years that he's now uncertain whether he's truly alive or merely an abstract concept. He goes on to share that his life story resembles that of Gabby's because he was also once a famous figure like her, but experienced a turning point from which he faded into obscurity. Furthermore, he reveals a golden ring on his finger, which possesses the power to render anyone invisible. He admits to having misused this ring for evil purposes, causing harm and chaos in people's lives. However, he eventually felt guilty for his deeds and sought refuge in this house, where he began writing scripts as a means to overcome his guilt. Nevertheless, his evil tendencies resurfaced when he saw Gabby. Now, Michael believes he can attain true peace only by relinquishing his power. As a result, he offers the ring to Gabby, urging her to use it as a blessing, unlike what he did. Despite hearing Michael's story, Gabby remains convinced that he is a figment of her dream and will vanish when she awakens. In order to persuade her otherwise, Michael asks her to read his scripts. It turns out that he has written everything about Gabby ever since she came to this house. As Gabby goes through it, she learns that there is no ending. Michael explains that the conclusion of the story, including his own fate, is in her hands now. With all this in mind, Gabby takes Dan's car and drives away. Several days later, Dan is seen giving a house tour to Michael, who intends to buy his property back. During their interaction, Dan notices a picture of Gabby and wonders where she has gone. Meanwhile, Gabby is with her lover Jimmy on the beach, possibly due to a form of time travel. This time, she asks Jimmy to stay at her place to avert the tragic accident. The movie ends as the couple rides away, with Gabby wearing the super powerful golden ring. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.